and welcome to Chandler in Focus. I'm Vice Mayor Renee Lopez, and we're here to talk about the Chandler International Film Festival. My guests today are Matesh Patel, uh, who is the founding and director of the Chandler International Film Festival, and Matthew Earl Jones, the Arizona Film Commissioner. Thank you for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. So first off, let's talk a little bit about your background. Matesh, let's start with you. So um, I graduated as a graphic designer. So I've been doing for the last 20 years. But 10 years back, I was thinking do something better than graphic design. So I started making movies. Mm -hmm. So I direct two movies and produce a couple of movies uh, in LA. So filmmaking is my background. So as, it started off as a hobby and became a profession. Yes, like. yeah, yeah. Yeah, did you submit your movies into some other festivals prior also? Yes, I did. It. The first movie I made, I got 12 award on that. And it wow. was low budget. I made it only with a couple of thousand dollars. And it did very well. It went to theater. It went to a couple of countries. So that was good. So you got the bug, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew? Oh, wow. Let's see. I've been in one aspect of entertainment or another for about 35 years. Um, prior to that, I was an ad agency guy and a client in New York City, and I was in L.A. for 16 years where I worked as a commercial producer primarily, briefly in front of the camera, but primarily as a producer. And then I've been here for 16 years and uh, been the state film commissioner for two. So. Right, well, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. thank you. So the Chandler International Film Festival, Matesha, how did you get this started? So... From LA, I moved here, I think, uh, three, four years back. Um, I came here because of, you know, I just want to come out to somewhere where I can be have less traffic. And this <laughs> is the best place for that. So I moved here, and when I came to Chandler, I noticed that there is no film festival. Mm -hmm. There is no film industry. There is, I don't find anything here. So I thought, let me start something where I can put uh, at least a filmmaker together, or I can, like, uh, screen something. And that's how I started. It was, it was very very small level I, I start this and from the first this is the third annual is that correct mm -hmm. yeah. right yeah and uh, so f compared to the first year so uh, I, I know when when you uh, started asking around about film festival in mm -hmm. Chandler a lot of people directed you to me because <laughs> yeah. pretty pretty big fan and, and a lot of the the independents and 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 such but uh, uh, talk to us about some of the learning experiences from the first year so the first year as I say, like I'm planning to make it very small level, like maybe like a small meetup or a few people come to watch movie. But then when I announced it, I got so many people who, who came from around the world, even the local people were excited. And that's bringing a, a lot better than what I expected. So I, I, I got the Soho 69, uh, 63 uh, for first year as a venue, which is the only venue I had it that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it worked out very well. It was three days event. Uh, we run around 83 films. Uh, yeah. yeah. Again, I, and kudos to you. I mean, it was uh, uh, kind of a short runway to get it going. Yeah. But it was a lot of fun. Attendance was really, really high in the red carpet opening day mm -hmm. um, and some outstanding films. Yeah. And I noticed to get some of the films, a lot of international. Uh, far away is Moscow, if I remember correct. Yeah, it was from Russia, uh, France. Italy, I do remember a lot of from Canada, Mexico, and mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of from the yeah, U.S. Very yeah. diverse. Yeah. It's a very, yeah. very good showing. Yeah. So part of that planning process, first year compared to this year, mm -hmm. what goes in the background of planning this up? So now, third year, we become, I think, three, four times bigger. Uh, our films are around 200 this year. 200? Oh. Just wrap up today with selecting all films. We have around like 200 films to screen. Uh, we have five days event now. It was uh, uh, three days before, so now we added two more days on that. Expanding. Uh, venues why we have one first year. Now this year we're gonna have ten venues, so that's a huge thing. Uh, we're using a Flix Brew House as a main theater, uh, but then we have other venues too in Chandler downtown. So yeah, spread around the downtown uh, area. Yes. Are, are all of them contained within downtown, or are they going to be around? The valley, like I think um, last year, where there was a couple of different. Things. Yes, so I'm I'm still working on opening night, so might be come up with some uh, some maybe. Okay. But the rest fashion. of the viewings are contained. Yeah, mostly downtown. ninety percent is right here. Yes. So, and 
ticket sales, I guess, are, are on right now? Seeing that? Um, is the festival pass is on now, but the okay. ticket sales start from next week. Okay. Uh, since I just choose that, now we're going to go individual show ticket. Okay. So um, we talked about film submissions, about 200 so far. Uh, you say you've closed the submissions for this year. Mm -hmm. yes. um, but uh, for next year, for planning, for anyone watching the show, and uh, if they are interested, where would they go to submit films for, for uh, the fourth annual yeah. International Film Festival? So after January, once our festival wrap up, we open again in February. It goes till November. And they can go to our website, ChandlerFilmFestival.com, and there is a submission button. They click on it. It took you to probably like two more websites, and they can submit as submit. they like to. Submit through the website? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And Matthew, your background isn't necessarily wholly unique into the film festivals, mm -hmm. but for Arizona, how are the, uh, the Arizona film festivals different, and this one in particular different from some of the other film festivals you've seen around? Well, I think that what the film festivals here really show is how much Arizona likes film. You know, where we're, the film office was one of the oldest film offices in the country. Oh, really? Yeah. When was it established? Uh, well, we were established back in the 40s, really? but we were, and we were shut down for six years. So when the film uh, office closed and the tax credits went away, so we were kind of dark from 2010 to 2016. So when I was hired, I was kind of like, I wonder what the level of support would be. And I have to say, I've been blown away by how much support there is for film. You know, when I go to film festivals, people come out of woodwork and go, you know, I worked on this film and, and the stories are great, no matter what part of the state you go to. And it's nice to see in the central part of Arizona, which is, you know, if you're coming straight across the 10 from LA, this is where you land. So it's it, it's very important that this area also uh, keeps keeps having festivals out there. It's a way not only for the industry to celebrate itself, but it's a way for the general population to realize the impact of film, uh, the financial impact, um, and that there are really great filmmakers here as well as coming from all over the world, which is another great showcase for Arizona because people come here and they go, wow, this is a great place. I'm going to make my next film here, which is what, what we hope. But it's also great the, the way film festivals, especially this one that has a film market, really helps the local film community. Because as much as my job is to import jobs and to get Hollywood companies or European companies to come here as opposed to the neighboring, I, I prefer neighboring to com <laughs> competing right. states, you know. But to, in, in, instead of going to neighboring states, but, you know, if you're here, I don't have to convince you to come here. And so uh, part of my job that I take very seriously is empowering local filmmakers. And festivals like this are great. They give them a voice. They give them a way to share their work, to raise money for their next project. So it's really a vital aspect of the industry here. So, so as a follow-up question on that, so the state of the film industry, I mean, you say it's growing here in mm -hmm. Arizona, a lot of support for it. Um, state you talked about again people that don't know arizona tend mm -hmm. to have a different perception and even talking about you know phoenix chandler in particular right. a, lot of, a lot of people know what we have to offer uh in, in this in the city mm -hmm. in our region the metropolitan region and across the state from north to the white mountains to the deserts to some of the lakes we have um a lot of filmmakers when like you, are you noticing that when they come to the state that it kind of opens their eyes to say there's a lot more to Arizona than we thought. We found that on, on my third day uh, in my job, they sent me to London without a business card, to, you know, because I was that new to go and sell Arizona. And someone had brought the 2002 Arizona Highways, a land for all special issue. And, you know, people would come up and they go, oh, Arizona. And, they, and I'd say, yes, there was a huge sign that said that. <laughs> and they'd say, oh, I don't need a desert or a western town. And, I, and they'd start to walk away and we'd tackle them. And we'd say, what is it that you need? And they'd say, well, we need a New England or we need an urban setting. We don't need a western town. And i go, can I have five minutes of your time? And we'd say, what state are you looking for? And in that issue, there would be a table of contents. And we go, Massachusetts. You go, does that look like Massachusetts? And people were so surprised that we have the most diverse topography. I mean, yes, we have Western towns and yes, we have deserts, but we also have the 
largest ponderosa pine on, on the planet. We have the, obviously we have the Grand Canyon. We have some of the most beautiful topography. And we kind of coined the phrase that Arizona is America's back lot as a way for people to see that there's, there's really nothing you can't shoot here. And we've made in a, uh, you know, the one thing we didn't have was a beach. So uh, through our relationship with Sonora, we have made a deal to represent their locations on the state website. The reason being, if they shoot in California or in Florida, Arizona gets nothing. If they shoot in northern Mexico, most likely they will pull crew, talent, and equipment out of Arizona. So while I might not get the tourism aspects or the locations, we're creating jobs and the film office is under commerce. So that's our priority is creating jobs. And that so. does a lot to help, like you just said, pull more options and diversity yes. of the film industry into yeah. Arizona. I mean, it's good for the organic growth, but again, you, you, you're going to want, you want both, right? To, to we do want in. both. Right. And, you know, we work on a fiscal year, so we are up so far 172% versus last year. Or to put it in perspective, in the first five months of this year, we've handled more projects than all of last fiscal year. Wow. So I think that, you know... Even in some of the warm months there. Even, right? well, <laughs> these are the hottest months. I was thinking I would get time to catch up on paperwork, but it hasn't been that way. But I'm certainly not complaining. Good. So Thank you. So, Matesh, let's talk a little bit about the International Film, International Film Festival, some of the mechanics behind it. Mm -hmm. What can we expect uh, to happen for some of the filmmakers and uh, for the visitors? Um, so this year, as I say, we have 200 films, so more film, more variety, uh, more you know, um, movie coming from around the world. Um, I noticed that it was around like 54 countries we have screened. Wow. We, yeah, we're going to screen this year. And uh, as we always invite all this filmmaker to come here, so people will come from around the world. Uh, last year, we have a 300 filmmaker who came. This year, my expectation is 500. So okay. they'll come from around the world, which is very good for, for Chandler. And, uh, you know, we can see a different culture, different filmmaker, and, you know, they can do business here or they can build something or some kind of connection we'll, we'll build with them. Um, also, for the local folks, they will see and meet with these folks. Uh, same time, they will learn a lot of things from the film. There's a lot of um, educational uh, films we have, it, documentaries too. Um, we have uh, animation to music video also. So all kind of variety. I think they'll be uh, very good for the local folks too. So combination out. spread of uh, yes. features yeah. also along with the shorts and all the categories in between? Yes. Yeah, so we have a total of 28 categories. So that's okay. like a short film, feature, uh, foreign film, uh, documentary. We have 28 categories like that. And it's divided in, in a single block. So if it's a short film, then we combine it and make it like a one block, like a one mm -hmm. show, like two hours or hour and a half. And uh, they can watch like five or ten uh, short film on that. Okay. Yeah. So, so some of the films, you, you brought a, uh, a trailer for one of the films that will be uh, uh, featured on the, at the film festival this year, right? Uh, Under the Eiffel Tower. Can you give yes. us a little bit of background on that one. Um, I just locked that film and uh, I did not get a chance to go through entire movies. I don't know much of that, but I watched the trailer and my team watched entire movies. It's a fantastic movie. Uh, it's American family goes to uh, Paris to see the Eiffel Tower and uh, the the guy's journey began from there. He went to the all the countryside in, in France. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very good. I think the trailer tell more than <laughs> uh, okay. about this. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Michelle. Let's take a look. Hey, buddy. Yeah. I think you should come with us. Two weeks in France. What do you think? You know how much Rosalind adores you? Plus, she wouldn't have to be stuck alone with her parents. Can we just leave them behind and live a life of ease, just the two of us? Would you do me the honor of being my wife? What? What in the hell? I'm 26 years old. You're what? You're 50? You're a very pathetic, unemployed, just sad, sad person. <laughs> Chill out, man. The most beautiful women in the world live in southern France. Bonjour. You want some? Oui. Yeah. Hey, beautiful wine lady. I can see you want to take in two hot wash tonight, My name is Louise. I'm one of the owner of the Chateau de Beauregard. This is Gerard. Where are you from in the States? Louisville, Kentucky. Ah, Nashville without the music. 
inhale the bouquet. Every glass of wine is a courtship. I do believe I detect a bit of grapes in this one, yeah? Chin chin. That is a sophisticated woman. She is into my maturity and knowledge. Now, you might be good at talking about wine, but I'm a virile footballer. I waited all my life for someone to come along. I'm completely stuffed. That's not a very polite thing to say in French. My stomach is filled with happiness. No. Oh. I might have a line on a vineyard. What kind of money are we talking about? I'm still feeling her out. Hey! Did no. you somehow think you could buy the vineyard in my back? You're the most pitiful thing I've ever seen. Hello, Stuart. God, you're like a ingrown hair. Just keep popping up. Very irritating. Very mm. embarrassing. I'd like to think I'm sort of just trying to figure out what's next. Hey! Watch us So what's next? This wine reminds me of a cold winter night, sitting by a fire, reading Balzac. <gasps>
They get to meet filmmakers and they go, you know, I'd love to have them in my neighborhood or shoot at my house or shoot in my business. And film festivals really are like a goodwill ambassador for our industry. Mm -hmm. And with them all out there, it kind of multiplies what the state film office can do. So we, we really are grateful for Mitesh and, and the other people who make these festivals so important. Very happy to hear that. As an Arizona native myself, we always try to be yeah. very welcoming to that diversity. Um, so, and your background, Matthew, you kind of have a different perception from what uh, Mitesh said. He really wasn't in the film industry before. I uh, Myself, <laughs> not either. But your family's been well known in, in the movie industry. Your father, you know, Robert Earl Jones, your brother, James Earl Jones. How do you think that gives you a different perception or perspective in the film industry versus those that are kind of newcomers into it? Well, I think I realize how much work is involved. You know, I was really fortunate that I would not only go see my father or brother on the stage, but I would often go to rehearsal. I would go backstage. I, I would see how much work it was. It's not just I walk up and I get paid a lot of money and I stand in front of a sign and they give me an Oscar. It's, it's, it's decades of work. Um, and I got to see just how many people were involved. So that kind of shaped, you know, my getting into the business. I, you know, started off sweeping sound stages and emptying the trash and doing the work nobody wanted to do. Um, the proverbial paid your dues, huh? You know, I, I, I started off as a set PA. So I think I have a realistic point of view. Um, and I think I also see it as a business. So as we are trying to market Arizona, we're able to see what do other producers want and be able to target our sales pitch to them. So we're really showing them that the things they need, like the support of the area, we can deliver. So I, I'm very blessed to have had a kind of a unique experience for a lot of film commissioners. Um, and hopefully it will it will serve me well in trying to put some sounds, programs together. Yeah, sounds like it. The metrics you're at so far this year well, must look like they're we've, very, we've, doing very well. There's a lot of love for film here. Um, I, I can't take credits. Uh, you know, when I submitted a five-year plan to the Commerce Authority, I said, like all good plans, there's nothing original in it. Um, <laughs> it's, it's I've yeah. tried to see things that have worked elsewhere and where you need to tweak them mm -hmm. for what's unique to Arizona. But I feel very, you know, the governor has made us a target established industry. Um, Sandra Watson at the Commerce Authority has uh, given a lot of support to our office. And they, they give me a lot of free reign, um, which is rare in government. So um, if I come up with an idea, they're always willing to hear it. And I feel very grateful for that level of support. So, Matesh, this year, though, we've partnered, you've partnered with the, uh, the Multicultural Festival, the Chandler Multicultural Festival this year. Right. So uh, where exactly, again, some of those venues uh, for this year, for 2019, and what are the exact dates for the festival this year, coming year? So, uh, Multicultural Festival is in uh, uh, 19 January, uh, Saturday. Uh, it's a day, and it's going to be at the Chandler downtown stage okay. uh, at the park. And uh, it's uh, from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. They're doing a lot of cultural activity. And from 7 to 9, we're doing outdoor movie. So right now, mm. I'm finalizing which movie is good for Chandler folks to watch outdoor. And I have a couple and of good options. coordination with the... Uh... Yes, so I'm working with them. And uh, next week, we're going to watch all and then make sure that it's a good film for... For, for the Metal Cultural Festival. Yes. Good. good. Yeah. So, and uh, for this coming event, uh, so what are some of the other additional activities? You said some of the workshops with the films. Mm -hmm. But my understanding is there's a few other things that they can expect, uh, some surprises this year. Yes, so... What we add up is that uh, we have a workshop last year too, but this year we add up a little more workshops. Uh, we have a total of five workshops uh, for filmmaking. Uh, one from ASU, the one from uh, University of Arizona. Uh, then we have it from uh, Distribur, is a distribution company based in LA. Uh, okay. They put uh, movies through Netflix and uh, Amazon and all that. So they are coming here to, you know, like uh, help and educate how they can pitch to them and how they put it on that. 
Uh, there is another company called Seedens Park. Uh, they also coming. They're based in New York. Uh, they are like more like uh, Indiegogo, like uh, funding, uh, fundraising for filmmakers. And they support that. They help on that. And they also like online film platforms. So filmmakers can make money on that too. So they come here to educate that too. And uh, we have one more about the screenwriting. So also like uh, how to write effective screenwriting on that. So we have five workshop. Uh, we also have a film marketing expo, which we started last year. And this year is going uh, more. Uh, we have around like 50 booth this year. And we have a lot of company already registered for that. Uh, it's it's a market and expo means that we have a filmmaker uh, who approach to the distributor, exhibitor, buyers, uh, production companies, rental companies. Uh, we also have a local company, uh, Broadcast Rental, who is coming here to educate about which uh, equipment to use it for, or what kind of scenes. So this way they have idea and which one is cheaper way also. Uh, so we are doing that also. Um, um, and there's another company, One Source Video, which provide the, the camera equipment to the retailers. They're also coming here from New York and promoting uh, the cameras to them. So uh, we have a Panasonic, Sony, uh, Blackmagic. They're all uh, companies are coming here to promote that. And we have a lot more on, on that side. So everything from a novice filmmaker just starting out? So somebody that is experienced and needs some help to go to the next level, distribution, funding. Yes, yeah. So it so, covers the whole gambit. Right. My goal is not just to keep it uh, film screening and after party. That's what mostly film festival doing it. We want to make it something where the filmmaker and the local people can have its benefit out of that. So that's why we're adding up the workshop, the discussion panel, the marketing expo, uh, we also doing a community screening. So we reach out to special communities and uh, we're doing one for Phoenix Children's Hospital. We're doing one of the kids' movie for them. Uh, okay. And we have a couple other community, other on like five to eight. We are doing a special, some of that, uh, we're doing Asian film too. Uh, Chinese film, we are doing it that too. And then some other communities. So we are we're locking that too. And uh, we're screening in uh, either in restaurant or doing in uh, at the theater. At some of the other venues. Yes. Like said, ten, uh -huh. ten different venues around downtown. Yeah. So uh, the details are all on the, will be on the it's website? It's going to be on the site uh, after a week because we just finalizing. So now we're putting up which uh, show should go on which location. So mm -hmm. it should be up in a week. And, Ren and Renee, if I may, that, you know, Mitesh kind of, you know, in a very modest, you know, he's very modest man. He kind of just kind of glossed over that, that this is a little different from most film festivals and, uh, you know, not casting any aspersions on any of the other fine film festivals we have in the state because, you know, that's certainly not my job. No. But um, a lot of film festivals do that. They, they provide a vehicle for people to showcase mm -hmm. their work, which is great because it inspires the next generation of filmmaker. And it also shows the public and educates them what film is about. And they have wonderful parties where you can meet the filmmakers. But these other things that he's added are really the business aspects of it. So you talk about my, my background being unique, that I could go to a movie and I could see a member of the family. But then I could ask them, you know, what did it take to, you know, go from your house to on the screen. And that really helps motivate people to decide that this is not just a hobby, this is where I can make a living and this is something I want to do. And these, usually you'd have to go to the American film market uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to film festivals because typically film festivals don't bring in a distributor and things like that. They're more about the art of the film, which is very valid. But if we're trying to rebuild the industry if we're trying to get private sector support, mm -hmm. if we want to get the schools involved, actually showing them the steps that it takes uh, is crucial, you know, because most people don't understand how you go from I would like to make a movie to I'd like my movie on the screen. And that's a long, difficult uh, process. So these programs kind of demystify that. And I think that's a huge asset and it's one that Mitesh really is like kind of just well we're right. also going to do this and 
but it's really a film festival. And as a standalone film festival without those things, it's a great film festival. But yeah. those things are the value add that certainly from my perspective, trying to educate people and trying to rebuild the industry right. here, these are a huge asset because it is inspiring people because it not just shows you what you can do, but it actually shows you the steps you can take to get there. Which it is introduces you to the people of the reality of, of what, what is that roadmap? And most people, you know, tend to hoard that information. But Mitesh is like, you know, he's happy to share everything he knows and bring in other people who know different aspects and give them a platform to share. And that really is where this festival in particular is really helping to build the industry here, which is makes it very near and dear to my heart. Well, and, and to your point, I mean, that's what provides why there are different film festivals. Mm -hmm. Chandler in particular, the Chandler National Film Festival is different from Sedona or from right. uh, yeah, uh, Scottsdale. Right. So it, similar to how Chandler stands alone, we have our own downtown, we have our own demographic mm -hmm. and structure. We aren't a Scottsdale or a Sedona. We all have our own identities. And in doing so, this helps depict that, right? We yes. are able to define our own identities in film festivals so that people, again, get that option to choose and, and decide where they where they go, where they show. And it helps all of them because, of you know, different ones have different focal points, right. as you as you pointed out. So the beauty is, is you can go to all the film festivals and see something different and learn something new. Mm -hmm. If all of them did exactly the same thing, you'd only need one. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. so that's it's. Uh, but this one in particular, um, the focus on the business aspects of the industry is really crucial because mm -hmm. I think the more people see it is a business, you can make a living, um, it will inspire people to seriously consider this, to do the extra work to go from hobby to job. Yeah. And the partnerships. I mean, the, yeah. the businesses nowadays, uh, I mean, short films, like you talked about, the, the children's hospital and some of the even you know larger businesses, mm -hmm. internally, they have uh, you know production marketing. It's not just a an advertisement on a flyer anymore. They're, you know, short films, screens, training sessions. I mean, there's a lot of production value now in many of the businesses, even mediums. Corporate businesses. communication, even at the smallest companies, you know, I'm old enough to remember where it was like a, a flyer where somebody's standing up and I won't say give a boring speech, but, but now it's all high tech video with animation and great music mm -hmm. and, and the, the selling and the sophistication, it's hard sometimes to tell, you know, corporate communication from that corporation's 30 second commercial. Mm -hmm. The production level is, is right there. And so I think that the more people see it's a business and understand the economic impact that it brings to the state and to the local community, the better. So, so thank you for the few minutes left. Uh, anything else you'd like to add, Mitesh? Um, Again, I just want to let uh, Chandler people know that uh, we have the very good festival. Um, come and join us. Uh, you know, there is a, if you have any question, they can go on our website and uh, uh, check all the information out. Uh, they can, there's a phone number if they have any question, they can call or email us too. Uh, mm -hmm. If anything, we can help. Uh, we definitely want to help. We want to support all of that, you know, to make it better festival. Good. So the Chandler Inter Chandler Film Festival dot com. Dot com. Yes. Okay. And uh, non Chandler residents are allowed to. Is that right? No, no I mean anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah. So, so yeah, we hoped uh, international and and uh, across the state, across the country. Yeah, I mean, great. we had a lot of uh, people come. Like I said, you know, a lot of submissions. Fifty four countries. 54 Four countries, countries. Well, yes. That is yeah. absolutely amazing. That's great. That's great. <laughs> Matthew, would you like to add anything? I would, I would just say, first of all, you all should take great pride in the city and the festival and that you are bringing people from 54 countries. And I mean, that right there is great. And I would just say to the people who enjoy the festival, when you see the volunteers walking around and you see this guy walking <laughs> around, it's okay to take a message and uh, take a minute and say, you know what, thank you. Um, <laughs> Most of them are working as volunteers, mm -hmm. um, and it oftentimes it's thankless work. And um, they are working very hard to provide a great experience 
um, for the people who attend. And so my only request is uh, if you see somebody in a uniform or you see this guy here, you probably won't be smiling as much because <laughs> you'll be in the middle of it. But take a second and let him know how much you appreciate all the hard work that he and his staff are doing. We do. It's been a great festival. Yeah. For a Thank you. And it's a, it's a great support from city also. So I appreciate that too. Yeah. Well, thank you both for joining me thank today. You. Thank Pleasure. you. Pleasure. That concludes our show for today. Thank you for joining us. I'm Vice Mayor Renee Lopez, and we'll see you next time on Chandler in Focus. Mm -hmm.